Hi, this is Lynn. And this is Paul. And we are Along the Way. And we're glad that you have come along with us on this journey. Today we're going to be talking about change and how change can be scary. Change is scary. And we were discussing this uh, before and, and talking about how uh, whether you're involved in a new church plant or revitalizing a, a church that's uh, struggling, uh, the, the focus that we're hitting here is when you encounter resistance in bringing about the change. Uh, so uh, the bullet points we want to share are, are along those lines. Uh, what do you do when you meet resistance to change? So I think the first one is educate. Educate your people uh, and do it. And the easiest way mm -hmm. is through a Bible study with those key individuals that are not sure this is the way to go mm -hmm. and um, just working with them through a biblical Bible study. You've done that more than once yep. in our different churches as we were bringing about some changes. Um, and it's, that was key. It's very key. It's very effective so long as uh, the people that you're working with also take the Bible as their authority in life and in practice, uh, you've got yeah. common ground. And, and uh, the biggest problem with change that's the most obvious uh, today is music style. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we first started out in ministry, we had this big grand organ, mighty pipe organ, and it sounded wonderful. Rattled the floorboards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but that isn't the case today in most churches. Most right. churches, it's a piano. Um, uh, we have a few churches that still have the big organ, um, but they got costly to repair. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly was in our first church, mm -hmm. uh, very costly to repair. It really ultimately comes down more to style than it does to the instruments, although sometimes the instruments can be a sore <laughs> spot for some people. Yeah. Uh, either way, uh, you're still dealing with resistance to change. Uh, yes. So it's a matter of, of taking your time, being uh, considerate of the people that, uh, that you're working with, not ramrodding stuff down their throats. Yeah, because even today, I mean, if you're planting a church and you've got a small group of people, you got in half a dozen people, you got half a dozen different mu musical tastes. Yes. Um, so it's just as relevant, even if it's not the old traditional organ. Yeah. Um, it is relevant today, um, in in just blending the musical styles because everybody's different even in our own marriage we're mm -hmm. different <laughs> we are in so many ways uh, <laughs> well <laughs> but you know she's right that um, uh, the styles that people bring with them into worship uh, are varied and uh, one of the things that we did once on um, probably more than once uh, we did a little survey of what people um, turned uh, what what people did when they got in their car and they turned on the radio what station they turned to uh, and um, you don't always get an honest response to that because everybody wants to sound right. They turn on the Christian station, you know. Um, but uh, you can get something of a feel for the, the music styles people prefer that way. Um, but I think the big, the big point here is know your people, educate your people, educate them biblically. Yeah, do a little Bible study. Mm -hmm. And it really does make a big difference. And in that Bible study, you probably want to make sure that you have some of your most influential people mm -hmm. at, as a part of that Bible mm -hmm. study mm -hmm. because they are the ones who can either be your biggest supporters mm -hmm. or, or the, the ones who uh, really stand in opposition. And if you can get those who might be in opposition to um, agree together in what the Bible teaches in terms of music uh, that's appropriate mm. for worship. Mm. Well, then you've mm. really uh, you've got your biggest supporters. Yeah, and and that makes that makes so much difference. Yeah. So after educate mm -hmm. and be biblical and, and be biblical, the third is be careful and prayerful. Uh, you're dealing with resistance, and that means you're dealing with people who have valid reasons on 
often, at least in their own minds, as to why they're resisting this change. So treat them with respect. Uh, be careful and slow. Don't ramrod it down their throats. Uh, be prayerful. Uh, do this together. It's not just you trying to uh, implement change because God gave you a vision on, on the mountain. Uh, you are bringing people into this vision, helping them own this vision and become part of it. So be careful, communicate well, uh, pray together uh, through the process. Uh, you'll, you'll just be amazed at how God brings you together uh, as opposed to uh, you know having a, a war and a, and a no man's yeah, land between absolutely so. and uh, Cassie is putting in her two cents yes she is our our, our puppy this is our, it's not a puppy this is our furry daughter <laughs> <laughs> and she can't understand why the camera's not on her <laughs> no no but anyways it's you know everything takes a period of grace and patience mm -hmm. and and uh, as he was saying, careful and prayerful. Uh, those are the key, key words, to be careful and be prayer, prayerful. Mm -hmm. And in order to be careful, you need to be full of God's grace. Yes. And he will give you the wisdom. And he will help, help you mm -hmm. get through without being the bull in the china closet. And just, you know, we've seen that way too often. It destroys relationships, and your church is not is not a, a method and a strategy. Your church is people, God's people, and so you want to be very, very careful with... And no matter how careful you are, you will yes. lose some people. But at least you know you will have done all that you can possibly do uh, to respect them, to love them, and she said treat them with grace uh, and strive for peace. Yes. So, so on that note... Yeah, uh, if you have some uh, comments and experiences you'd like to share along these lines, uh, dealing with change that's scary and the resistance that comes with it, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, help the community by putting your comments below, yeah. and uh, we look forward to your reading your comments. And uh, <laughs> and Cassie's ears are probably in. <laughs> in the picture now so this apparently is the time at which we say <laughs> thank you for joining us for along the way yeah and, and we will see, see you for our next installment so this is lynn and this is paul god bless and we'll see you on down the road bye-bye